Hi, I'm Ashley with J&A Travel Adventures and I want to give you some observations and tips about the Hamad International Airport in Doha, Qatar that I think will help your visit to the airport go a lot more smoothly. Now, first thing is that I, in my opinion, the airport can be broken into three different sections. The first are the five terminals, which is A through E, and all the gates associated with them. To me, that area is very industrial and like almost any airport you're going to see around the world. A couple of exceptions are that it has two very nice um, playgrounds. One is near the Doha Bear, which is right in the center of all the terminals, and that is a boy with some several slides on it, and that one's very busy. There's a second one, if you've got little ones and want a little bit more space, that is down Terminal B, and it is two little boys, one's laying down, one's sitting up, and there's cute little slides and things, and that one's not near as busy. The other thing I want to make sure you know about the terminal part of the airport is there are tons of cafes everywhere. But as Americans, we're used to hitting a food court type design where you can grab fast food and you go and sit. I didn't find a, a food court type area. Everything is sit down cafes. So if you've got a small amount of time and you're traveling economy or premium economy, keep that in mind that you're going to have to sit down for eating or bring something with you in your backpack. One thing that is a highlight of the cafes is Harrah's. And Harrah's Cafe does high tea in total British style all day long. So if you have time and you like having a high tea, go check out Harrah's Cafe because you'll get the full elegance of British high tea. The second section of the airport is so, so impressive to me. If you are a shopper, you will be blown away. It is the largest duty-free mall shopping area I in my life have ever seen anywhere in the world. It is two sides, one part being on the left of the Doha Bear and one part being on the right, and there is everything, and I mean everything, couture you possibly could ever need. There is everything from Toblerone to Hennessy to Tom Ford, Coco Chanel. There is not a brand label that is not showcased in the duty-free shops. So if you're a shopper, save your money. It is very, very impressive. A highlight of the shopping area, which as an American, I was completely intrigued with, is the gold shop. And it's just called the gold shop. And when you first look at it, it looks like one of those stalls that's a kiosk in American malls with all the fake jewelry in it. Oh no, this is all legit, 100%, 18 karat to 24 karat gold. And you see hanging up row upon row upon row, hook upon hook of all these necklaces, 20 and 30 deep. Then you look in the cases, and the cases are full of ring upon ring. I mean, all different styles, only gold, only gold bracelets, the whole nine yards. And what it is, is in Qatar, you can buy gold by the ounce and it's sold on that daily price that is on the market. So what people do, and I watch many people do this, is they will walk up to the counter and there are people that are from all different countries who collect gold as an asset. And so they walked up the counter, they bought two of this necklace, one of this ring, one of this bracelet, they bought them, they put them on their plastic, they pulled the tags off, they put the necklaces, rings, and bracelets on, and they walked to their gate. So it's a way that people who collect gold can actually buy pretty jewelry for the price of the gold of that daily registered price is all you're paying. Okay, so that's the shopping and the duty free. Now the third and the crown jewel for Qatar Airlines is the lounge. You take this really pretty, pretty um, elevator up to this huge marquee area where these quotes are going around the top, which are so profound. And it's all these random quotes. And once you check in, you realize this is where Qatar Airlines is showing off. Now, it is all about sophistication, elegance, calm. Very calm, a lot of orchids. Now, let me walk you through it so you get your best use of this lounge. Because I've talked to people as we're traveling, and many people didn't know about some of these things. First thing off the bat is that all food, 
liquor, drinks, coffee, lockers, showers, everything is completely complimentary if you have business tickets for the airlines. One thing to note is that they do sell day passes to this lounge, but due to COVID, there's a small number that's being sold right now. So whenever you book your tickets, if you're flying economy or premium economy, try to buy it then. If you can't get it, just keep trying because it is well worth the cost. Okay. So you walk in the lounge and the first thing you see is this really pretty silver wall artwork piece. You look immediately to your right and there's this kind of off on its own little door. Go in there, that's lockers. So even though the stuff you have with you are carry-on, we were there for nine hours. We had a lot of carry-on stuff. So as soon as we got there, we put our stuff in the, carry in the lockers, our carry-on, and we got out the pieces that we need. And we just came back and forth as we needed things, okay? The next thing to note is that right after on the right, the lockers is this very opulent staircase that goes to the second floor. Now that goes to the Crown Jewel restaurant of Qatar Airways. It is different now because of COVID, because, so everything is in little closed containers and you have to walk around and tell people what you want and there's wait staff everywhere. And you say, I want one of these and two of these and they bring it to your table, okay? But let me tell you what's available. It's a full sushi bar, it's prime rib, it's massive soups and salads. The dessert display is just, just straight out of Willy Wonka. It's so pretty. There are every type of Middle Eastern food. Anything you possibly could ever think to get as sophisticated food is available and it is brought to your table once they give you a table. Another thing to note is the bar which is fully stocked with all the alcohols and all the wines that are on the plane. So like Hubby fell in love with the Syrah on the plane. That exact same Syrah of the exact same year is available in that restaurant. So that's what he had with our dinner. So you've dropped your things to the locker, you've had a good meal, the next thing you do is come back downstairs to that silver wall and right behind it is the main set of showers. There's the women's and the men, of course very separated, and they have check-in people. Now one thing to note is this is the main section of those and they get busy. So it might be that you have to put your name on the list and wait, which is fine because many chairs you can do that. Um, in the showers and everything, Anything you possibly could need in there. Shampoo, conditioner, lotions. If you want a hair dryer right now, because of COVID, you have to ask the attendant. They are not leaving hair dryers in there unless you specifically ask for them. A tip that I recommend is that to keep less things in our carry-on, on the Qatar Airlines planes in their bathrooms, they always have the little kits that include toothpaste and toothbrush in one kit, and razor and shaving cream in the other kit. I always grab one of those sets for each of us off the plane, tuck it into our carry-on, so when we get to the showers, we don't have to have ones we brought with us, and when we're done with them, we can throw them away, one less thing in the carry-on. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to find out more great tips like I have in this video and all of our future videos, subscribe so that you won't miss out as we travel around the world. Okay, so you, those are the main parts of the Qatar Lounge. One thing to know, there's a hidden gym area, which we really, we stumbled on this. We literally stumbled on this area. And I have not found anybody in travels that knew about it and everybody's loving when I tell them, is that when you go into the lounge, the entrance, instead of going to the right to the lockers or upstairs to the restaurant or across to the main showers, if you go to the left and go all the way down, there's another small restaurant back there. And that restaurant 
has a functional bar. It's not the pretty bar, but it has everything as far as wine and alcohol that the upstairs does. It also has all the food that the upstairs does, but it's made to order. So if you want the hummus and tabbouleh, you pick it off the menu, you sit there, they bring it to you. So it's not that you can walk around, look at everything set up all prettily. But, so the restaurant's fine down there, but the main part are these hidden rooms off of this restaurant. When you walk in the restaurant, and you've got to walk into the restaurant, you look to the right, there's this hallway, and it looks like it's a service hallway, and no, it's not. It actually goes back to sleep rooms. There's no signs anywhere until you actually get into this hallway. So when you walk back there, we spent seven hours back in the sleep rooms, and this was just the hidden gem of the lounge. You walk in, and as soon as you walk in, there's this gorgeous mahogany-looking desk, and there's a very elegant lady who speaks very quietly because you're in the sleep lounges. And right behind her, this is something to pay attention to, when it's busy, right behind her is a set of men's and women's showers. Talking to her, she says those showers, rarely do you have to wait more than one person because nobody knows they're back there. So they're the exact same big, luxurious showers as the main set but nobody knows they're there so go back there and have your shower once you've had your shower check with her and book a sleep room these sleep rooms to give you an idea are about the size of what i consider in most hotels their bathrooms kind of standard ada bathroom double that and that's the size of the sleep room that you are checking into when you walk into the sleep room, on the left is going to be this really pretty mahogany color leather couch. In front of you is going to be a chase lounge with an ottoman. And over to your right is going to be a large screen TV that you can use for watching TV. Um, but it's also an airport terminal which shows you where all the gates are in term and gates and planes and departures and arrivals and things like that are going on. So also in there is no joke it has to be at least eight to twin ten usb plugging um spots so as soon as hubby and i walked in there we booked plugged in everything to get everything charged so that everything was good to go hubby figured this out which i thought was a really smart idea he took the kit cushions on the back of the couch because we were trying to figure out how to get comfy on this couch and they're completely free so he took those cushions turned them and put them on the arms so they're just right there on the ends and when he did the whole part of the couch is almost the size of a double bed so hubby and i were able to lay down and sleep for a good four or five hours flat on this leather couch there also is if you ask the lady she will give you blankets so they're the nice velour fuzzy blankets they have on the airplane you can have blankets in there too Two things to know that I learned really quick is that terminal TV, which you can use with earphones and watch things if you wanted to, but there is no way to turn that thing off. So hubby felt around everywhere. There are no buttons. It's going to run all the time. So if you are bothered by lights when you sleep, bring from the airplane, bring your blinders, your sleep blinders, so that you can cover up your eyes. The other thing, which I was very lucky about, was that not 30 minutes after we'd gotten in there and gotten settled and about to start sleeping, somebody back in one of the other sleep rooms started snoring like a freight train. So luckily for me, in the chaos of getting off the last plane, I'd shove my earplugs into my pocket. So I plop my earplugs in, I put my blinders on, and I got four really good hours of sleep. One thing to note, is that you're not allowed to turn alarms on because they're sleep rooms and they don't want you waking everybody else up. So they ask you to put your alarm on vibrate. I was really worried that we wouldn't hear that and I mentioned that to the lady at the desk and she goes, oh, I can do a wake up call for you. And I was like, okay. Thinking, how do you do a wake up call because there's no phones in these little rooms. Well, what she does, it's so cute. She walks in and she goes, Mr. Miss, Mr. Miss, it's time for you to wake up. Please excuse me, it's time to wake up. She was just so sweet about it, and we got up and we made it to our plane. So take advantage of everything that they've got hidden inside the lounge because there are a lot of places. Oh, 
I almost forgot. Back at the restaurant where we turn to the right to go to the sleep rooms. If you turn to the left, there's another set of sleep rooms that are called family sleep rooms. They work the exact same way as the sleep room where hubby and I were in that you're supposed to be quiet, it's for sleeping, everything else is the same except instead of having one couch, they have two and three couches. So I poke my head in real quick and there was a mom and dad and they had like four kids. And so they had kids spread out everywhere and everybody was out cold. So if you have a family and you're ready to be asleep, walk in the restaurant, go to the left, and there's family sleep rooms in there. So I hope all these observations and tips could help you out because I guarantee once we found different things in, in the lounge, which is so, so nice, our stay going and when we came back in Qatar was so much more enjoyable. Thank you.